What is up folks, welcome back. So on this channel, we have videos on lasso regression and ridge regression, also known as L1 and L2 regularization respectively. And if you think back to those videos or understand those concepts, the idea is that they are variations of ordinary least squares, but we don't want the coefficients, the betas, to get arbitrarily large. We want to somehow control the size and magnitude of those betas. Now, lasso and ridge are similar in those respects, but they differ in how they go about it, and those different approaches lead to very different behaviors in those betas. So let's start with a quick recap on lasso and ridge, and then using those, and using the pros and cons of lasso and ridge, we'll talk about how we get the best of both worlds, using something at the middle of lasso and ridge, or put another way, something that encompasses lasso ridge and everything in between, called elastic net regularization. So to start with, in the ordinary least squares problem, we are trying to find some betas. So we have our intercept beta naught and then all of our coefficients beta. So beta is really a vector of all the other uh, beta one, beta two, and so on and so on that go on our x1, x2, and so on. So we want to minimize the residual sum of squares, which is going to be the sum over all n of our data points, true value of y, yi for each of our data points, minus the estimated value of y coming from ordinary least squares, which is going to be beta naught plus xi transpose beta. So hopefully this part is familiar to you. We square that difference and we sum all of those square differences. So of course we want to minimize that error. And now when we talk about lasso and ridge or L1 and L2 regularization, we add an extra constraint on top of this minimization problem. In lasso, so we'll label this one is lasso or L1 is this first cell here. We are enforcing that the sum of the betas from beta one to beta P, which is all of the betas besides the intercept, the sum of those absolute betas must be less than or equal to some number T. Now the smaller T is, the harsher our regularization, the more we wanna shrink all of these betas down. The bigger T is, as T goes to infinity, we're not really doing any regularization at all. And so the T is controlling the strength of the regularization in this case, as well as all the other two cases we're gonna look at here. Now one interesting case where we have just a beta one and beta two so we can actually visualize this. Recall from our study on lasso that the shape that this constraint traces out in the beta one, beta two plane. So to make that clear here, this X axis is beta one, this Y axis is beta two, same thing for all of these, so I'll just label those so we don't forget, beta one on the X and beta two on the Y. On this beta one, beta two plane, this constraint is going to be a diamond whose corners are at T, T here, negative T, and here at negative T. So we are saying that you need to pick a combination of beta one and beta two, and in general, beta one, beta two, beta three, so on, all the way to beta P, you need to pick some kind of combination of those betas that falls on the boundary or inside of this diamond. And that visually is encompassing the exact same thing as we are saying mathematically with the sum of the absolute values of all these betas needs to be less than or equal to T. Now the fact that this is a diamond was very important and crucial for one of the most important properties of lasso. In fact, the property for which we use lasso to begin with in many cases, which is the sparsity property of lasso. And that sparsity property basically says that it is very likely that when we use lasso regression and when you use a constraint of this shape, that the solution that is going to be found at the end of the day is going to exist exactly at one of these corners here. And what is special about one of those corners there? What is special is that one, and in the many dimensional case, many of these betas are going to be exactly zero. So you see in this corner here, beta one is equal to T and beta two is equal to zero. In this corner here, beta one is equal to zero and beta two is equal to T. All of these corners have that property that one of the betas has been sent to exactly zero. And it's the sparsity case that lets us do things like feature selection. It's gonna send many of the less useful variables to send their parameters, their beta parameters to zero and keep the other ones as some kind of positive or negative numbers. And that gives us information about which variables are useful and which variables are not. Now where that becomes an issue and one of the cons of lasso is what happens when two variables or multiple variables are very correlated with each other. So consider in this simple case, pretend that our variables x1 and x2 were pretty much the same variable. They're very, very correlated with each other. They are going in the same direction. So in that case, lasso just arbitrarily sends one of them to zero and the other one gets a positive or negative value. Which one it is, is not predictable and it's going to lead to skewed understanding because even though they're very correlated and in that sense they are equally useful because they're really providing the same information, Lasso is going to make a all or nothing decision. One of them is going to get a positive and negative value and we are going to believe that one is important and the other one is not useful. 
even though on a subsequent run of lasso, or if we tweak the data ever so slightly, we could get the exact opposite result. So it's not stable in that case. And that brings us into ridge. So in this middle case, we have ridge regression or L2 regularization. In ridge, we have the exact same problem, except for the constraint is going to be that the sum from j equals one to p of beta j squared, all of these beta j squared, the sum of them needs to be less than or equal to t. Now, even though that looks like a little change mathematically, it has very different implications. First of all, geometrically, we are no longer dealing with a diamond. We are dealing with a circle of radius radical t. And recall that that shape difference isn't just a cosmetic one, but also has implications for where the solution usually ends up. It's usually, in fact, almost never going to end up exactly at one of these corners. And that is exactly because we don't have these harsh corners here where, and now I'm getting a little bit deeper in the weeds, but the reason that we often have one of these corners as the solution is because the level curves of this loss function here often come in like this, for example, and hit exactly at one of those solutions there. If we think about those level curves coming in here, it's very, very unlikely, in fact, pretty much impossible, that it's going to hit exactly at one of those, not even corners, but just previous solutions here that we were hitting. It's usually going to hit at some other part of the arc of this circle here. And crucially, at all of those other parts of the arc of the circle, none of the beta coefficients are going to be exactly zero. They may be small, but they're never going to be exactly zero. And so Ridge is going to have pretty much the opposite pros and cons. It's not going to give a sparsity. It's not going to ultimately reveal which variables are important, which ones are just unimportant in the way Lasso does. So it's not going to help us with feature selection, but it's also going to solve that previous case that Lasso struggled with, where if we have two or more variables that are very correlated with each other, we're not just going to arbitrarily set one of their coefficients to zero and the other one gets to be a positive or negative number. Ridge is gonna be doing a much better job at balancing between them. It's gonna give an equal weight to the two of them. And so the last thing I'll mention about Ridge is that remember that it's not setting any of our coefficients exactly to zero, but yet the sum of the squares of all these coefficients are still bounded by this budget of t, which means that if some of the coefficients that in Lasso would get set to exactly zero and not take up any of that budget, because they are taking up some fraction of that t budget in Ridge, that means the others of those coefficients, which are much more useful, are going to get arbitrarily shrunk down because some of that budget is being taken up by those useless variables. The truly useful variables will not get as much budget. And so Ridge has this other side effect or other downside of artificially sometimes punishing the coefficients more than they need to get punished. So we told a big story there. There are definitely pros and cons to Lasso and Ridge. So how do we kind of get something that's a compromise between Lasso and Ridge that has the best of both worlds? And that is exactly where elastic net regularization is going to come in. It's not anything new. In fact, it's actually a combination of Lasso and Ridge mixing them together according to a custom parameter. So in elastic net regularization, you'll see that we have exactly those two things. This piece right here is going to be exactly the penalty in Lasso. And this piece right here is going to be exactly the penalty in Ridge. And we are going to combine them together according to some custom parameter rho. So we have this Greek letter rho, and that's going to be multiplied by the L1 norm here. And then we have one minus rho gets multiplied by the L2 norm right here. So one thing I'll say right off the bat is that think about the extreme cases. If rho is equal to one, then we are back at the L1 case. That's exactly lasso regression. So the elastic net regularization with rho equals one is lasso regression. If we set rho equals zero, then you can see that's exactly ridge regression. So lasso and ridge are actually just special cases of elastic net regularization where rho is either set to zero or one. But in general, when rho is some number that's not zero or one, we are taking some amount of the L1 norm and we are mixing that with some other, some complementary amount of the L2 norm. And we are saying that sum, that weighted average, needs to be less than or equal to t. And that really nice mathematical story actually, in this case, works out to a really nice geometric story too. This gray diamond here is the L1 norm. This gray circle here is the L2 norm. Elastic net, based on what value of rho you select, is going to be this kind of intermediate shape. That green shape you're seeing here and the blue that's filling the interior of it, that is exactly the shape of the constraint we're getting in elastic net. Again, as rho gets closer to one, that approaches the diamond, it shrinks into the diamond. As rho gets closer to zero, that is getting closer to the circle. And it's exactly that shape that gives us the best of both worlds. 
So let's talk about why it's able to give us the sparsity from lasso. It's able to give us sparsity from the lasso because if we zoom in on any of these corners here, I know it's difficult to see, so let me show you kind of the shape of it uh, right here. If we zoom in on this upper corner here, it's going to look kind of like this. It's going to look kind of like this. So I'm drawing this the best I can. There is still a cusp here. It's no longer a corner, but it's not smooth like the circle is, nor is it a corner like the diamond is, but rather it's a cusp. It's actually, if you do the math here, it's two circles coming together, but those circles are offset, so it doesn't give a smooth transition, but rather you're getting a cusp here. Because you're getting a cusp there, when these level curves come in, it is totally possible for them to hit the top of that cusp. It's not as likely as it's going to be in the lasso case, where you have that very harsh corner, but it's not going to be a basically zero probability like you have in the circle case, where all parts of the circle are symmetric, so why should the level curve hit there with any other higher probability than it hits anywhere else on the circle. In fact, there will be a higher probability of hitting that cusp, but again, it's going to be some balance between the circle and the diamond here. So it does give us that sparsity. It does allow for sparsity just like lasso does because of the geometric shared properties of this diamond and this kind of cusp-like shape. And so that's a check for why it is able to give us the sparsity the lasso is able to. Now, we said that the issue with lasso is when you have variables that are very correlated with each other. In that case, it just arbitrarily sets one of them to zero, which is the wrong idea. Now, let's see what this would do. We see that when the level curves were coming in, in the ridge case, they're going to hit on some balanced part of the circle right here. Let's see what happens if the level curves come in in this shape here. Because this green part here is protruding, the level curves are going to hit that piece before they hit any of these corners here. And I know that's a little bit of a hand wavy argument, but the reason we are avoiding the sparsity issue that we have in lasso is the exact same reason that ridge avoids that sparsity issue, because as the circle is jutting out, the level curves that come in in the collinearity case are gonna hit the outer part of the circle here. Because we do have a bit of a bulge here to work with in all cases, we are gonna hit that outer part of the bulge, which is gonna give us a balance between beta one and beta two, if their corresponding variables x1 and x2 are very correlated with each other. So we are not going to have that issue. We're not going to have that issue with collinearity that we had in the lasso case. And so you can see here, hopefully mathematically and geometrically, why we are balancing in the elastic net case between lasso and ridge, why we are still able to get that sparsity that we like in lasso without succumbing to any of those issues with collinearity that we have in lasso, but which are solved in ridge. So it truly is the best of both worlds. The cost that we have to pay is some added complexity. The uh, constraint here doesn't look as nice or simple as it does in Lasso and Ridge, and so it will have some added computational and interpretable complexity. But in my experience, giving yourself that parameter row to work with, and that row is something that we also have to worry about tuning properly, but that flexibility is going to help us unlock a whole set of problems, which otherwise would have been bogged down by the deficiencies in either Lasso or Ridge. So this is bringing together the best of both worlds. So if you have any questions on elastic net regularization, please do leave them in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.